had been a wet and stormy winter on the Isle of the Sodor. A lot of the engines were out of work because of it, branch lines had been shut down, and some of the people couldn't even leave their homes because of it. On one of those days, Sir Topham Hatt sat, panicking, in his office. Oh dear, he said to himself, a worried expression spread across his face. Groven's gears is short on shunters, and I sent the last one to Natford. Oh, what should you? He sat, hitting his pen loudly on his deck as the clock slowly ticked away behind him. The stout gentleman felt sick to his stomach. Then, it came to him. I want you, he said quietly. He snatched the telephone off the receiver to make an urgent phone call. Hello? Yes, this is Sir Bertram Chopham speaking. I was calling to request one of your shuttle tank engines for immediate use on the Northwestern Railway. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, he'll do fine. You'll send him immediately. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you again, Nigel. Okay, goodbye now. He hung up the phone, grinning to himself as he sat back in his seat. A day later, the fat controller stood before Wilbur, shivering in the freezing cold morning air. Morning, sir. Wilbur said, looking down at him. Morning, replied. Lovely weather we're having. L -l Lovely, he shakily said. He smiled. This is nothing compared to what we see on the Dean Forest Railway. Ah, he bluntly replied. Anyway, Wilbert, I need you to go to Crovenge Gate for normal pilot shunting duties. Now off you go. Yes, sir. I'm on to it. He eagerly replied as he steamed away ready to work. Wilbert worked hard over the next few days to get Crovenge Gate back into its normal working order. It had been a hard few days for the old austerity, but he managed. Unfortunately for him, the cold weather only got worse as the days rolled on. One night, Wilbert rolled into the sheds once more worn out. He yawned loudly to himself as his crew walked away from him waving goodbye. He was all alone in the sheds on this night, but that didn't matter to him. Wilbert eagerly closed his eyes ready for a good night's sleep. Wilbert woke abruptly. He didn't know how long he'd been asleep for or what woke him, but a large amount of ominous mist had engulfed the surrounding area. Wilbert peered into the dense mist, silently observing it to himself. Then, he looked to his right and nearly jumped right out of his chassis. There, outside the window of the shed, was a pure black face staring at him with two black pupil bloodshot eyes. Wilbert stared back in complete shock. It was freezing cold. No one would want to be out there this time of night. As Wilbert observed the face, he noticed there was no condensation on the glass of the window, meaning that he wasn't breathing. Then Wilbert had finally built up enough courage to speak up. Uh, hello? The person said nothing, but stared at the blue saddle tank. After a while, the person said nothing once more, only opening his eyes to inhuman human size. Wilbert was horrified, but put on a brave face. He tried ignoring the face, and attempted to go back to sleep. But he couldn't, no matter how hard he squeezed his eyes shut. Finally, when Wilbert saw the face had disappeared, without a trace, it gave him enough courage to fall back asleep. Finally, Wilbert awoke tired and dazed from the last night's happenings. It was all a dream. He thought to himself as he peered over to the window where the figure was peering in. He yawned. <sighs> Glancing at the window one last time before puffing away to the yards to begin pilot duties. The day was normal for him as he worked around the clock pushing coaches and pulling trucks. But his mind kept coming back to those eyes staring him down like a wolf hunting a rabbit. Soon enough, the day had come to an end and Wilbert returned to the shed even more tired than yesterday. As his boiler cooled, James stopped up alongside him with a scowl longer than the tracks he was running on. James, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be at Tipmouth? Wilbert tidily asked. Oh, I should, James replied, annoyed by Wilbert's question. The fact controller wants me to pull a slow goods train very early tomorrow to Vickerstown. He scoffed loudly. I'm so sick and tired of being overworked. And don't get me started but on the- before he could answer, Wilbert snored loudly over James's ranting. Ugh! 
typical tank engine. James said before closing his own eyes, both falling into a deep slumber. Wilbert was jumped out of his sleep and looked all around. James was wide awake and staring with a horrific expression across from Wilbert. James? Uh, are you okay? What is th 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 that? Wilbert looked over and saw the thing again at the same window. Its eyes were wider than last night, and tonight it was grinning at the two engines with a scary look of malicious intent. The engines didn't dare look away from it as the figure raised its long, bony hand and banged on the window three times. The engines shut their eyes tight. Go away! James yelled in fright. Wilbert said nothing as the dense fog silently rolled in. He kept his eyes shut for the longest time without opening them. Then, when he thought that the coast was clear, he opened them, but he instantly regretted it. Outside the shed, he saw an inhumanly lanky, grotesque, and pure black figure. The thing's eyes fixated on his own. Wilbert closed them again more tightly than he had ever before. Then, he heard slow, concrete footsteps making their way towards Wilbert and James. He didn't open them for the longest time until a long, dry breath was all that was heard. This forced them to open his eyes. To reveal that the thing looked straight at him, only a few inches from his face. <coughs> the large black pupil bloodshot eyes stared into his soul as Wilbert screamed out in horror. Wilbert was jolted awake with the sun in his eyes and his driver saying, Wilbert, Sir Topham's here to see you. Wilbert looked all around, stunned by the, what had just happened. He was completely speechless. Morning, Wilbert. I just want to thank you personally for your help over here in the last couple of days and wanted to see you off from your trip back to the mainland. Wilbert screeched. Sir, there's something wrong with this shed. You need to tear it down immediately. The fat controller looked up at the austerity puzzled. Now why on earth would I do that? Sir, this might sound silly, but I think there's something strange going on here. Wilbert blurted out. The stout gentleman looked up and laughed. Oh, you engines in your paranoia, he continued. But you and I both know it was all on your dreams and imagination. But, 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 sir, I... Wilbert spluttered, but before he could finish, the fat controller had cut him off. Now off you go home, Wilbert. Your controller will be worrying sick about you. <sighs> yes, sir, said Wilbert defeated. As he steamed out of the shed for the last time, Sir Topham turned around and looked at the old shed. As he stared at it, he took off his top hat and put it to his chest as a sign of great sadness. I I'm sorry, Fred, he said under his breath as he placed the hat back upon his head and walked away to his car. A couple of weeks later, to James's protest, the shed at Craven's Gate was torn down and a newer modern shed was built atop of it. Some of the workmen say they even took a picture of the figure's eyes peering in through the window at them. But this could have easily been faked. Wilbert never returned back to the island of Sodor after what happened. But the question still played on his mind. Was it all a dream? Or did he really see the eyes of Crovengate Shed? <laughs>